Okay, I'm back for another Pico 8 video. I stopped the last one because I'd hit a nice finish point and also my wife had started using a hairdryer right outside my office and it's uh, quite loud. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is create invulnerable enemies in pipes. So first I need to make a pipe graphic. These were sort of mainstay of the original Cybernoid. Um, let's go back to the map graphics. Probably I could just sort of copy the uh, existing pipe wall thing I've got but I sort of need them to look different uh, actually I'm just going to go and quickly research an uh, image of the original because I remember green pipes bear with me yeah okay so they're still shaded on one side we have to decide which side to make dark and which side to make light uh, oh, Cybernoid 2 had pipes the same colour as the scenery. Yeah, maybe that's just easier. I'll just use the scenery ones. So, I'm going to. Oh, do need to do that. Does escape work? Whoops, Control Z. No. So, I'm going to add a pipe in the first room just so I can test this out um, which I don't know how good it's going to look let's have a look we'll, we'll try um, something like this you have to be able to traverse the pipe and the enemy somewhere else just have a look. Mm. Might I might need those sort of things. Yeah, that's all right. So you have to sort of get through the pipe. No problems. There's a bit of leeway on the sprite. You'll notice because it's not full eight by eight. Boom, boom. Okay, but it is. There's no leeway in the pipe. Um, let's stick an enemy in there. Vertical one. Right. So, oh, I, I, I erred. I actually scared myself then because the sound effects are quite loud. Oh, not again. I also noticed on the original um, that the collision detection is smaller on the enemy so if you do poke your gun out like that you don't get hit so I think I'm gonna I'm gonna have to do that give the player a bit of leeway but basically you're gonna have to do that cool the only problem is at the moment it's not just it's not indestructible so I could just blow it up and do that now if I make this one indestructible one of the issues I've got, and it's sort of an issue in the original game, is um, if all the enemies you can destroy are sort of like grey, like this, how do you define one which is indestructible? You know, it ought to really be a different colour. Um, and I've got, I've used green for this slime stuff, so we don't want to use green. So the question is, can I change those sprites to be you know a different color to indicate that they're non-destructible they just have gray ones as destructible not sure um, let's go and have a look at the sprites mm. yeah I just don't know what would be a good color we've got green for slime orange for like explosions we could use blue we could just change the color of the light somehow um, you know we could have blue on the indestructible ones and red on the destructible ones maybe or the ones that fire at you could have a red thing on them um, I don't know if I want the pink there's purple it's a bit strange though let me copy this sprite anyway copy just paste it over there for now. Um, yeah, so I could do 
something like this. Let's just see what it looks like. Um, and then that pink might be a bit too pink. What color light? Stick with blue. Does it look indestructible? I mean, I don't know. I don't know what it looks like. Is it different enough? I mean, yeah, I could change the light to something else. Could change this to a lighter pink. I don't know if that's any better. What if I do the middle? Just completely move away from that sort of blue. Um, how does it look if it was in the pipe? I mean, it stands out more than the other one. I mean, I could make all the other destructible enemies a different colour and the the indestructible one's grey. Um, or let players destroy them, unlike the original Cybernoid. But that removes a certain amount of challenge. Um, they're okay like that. I say green we've used for those, otherwise I could have made them green. What else could I do? Blue, just a sort of dark blue thing. Just generally blue. Then, I mean that's the light one. But that probably looks a bit weird. Could do that. It does look a bit like the walls though, doesn't it? I've used the same blue. So I know it will be animated, but man, this is tough. It's bright design. Brown, but brown doesn't say indestructible to me. I think I think it's gonna have to be purple. With pink middle and then this light pink here and then I'm not sure about the light color anymore just could go red yeah red it looks dangerous now that's the thing green goes with the pink a little bit doesn't look as threatening. I think red looks threatening, like a boss or an enemy. Um, could have yellow. Yeah, maybe yellow is quite good. Orange. It's kind of mellow, isn't it? I, I quite like that, actually. Okay, I'm going to redo this. So I'm going to copy this sprite over that one pasted fine and then yeah I can paste it over them all and fix the animation oh I notice I've still used grey for the background sort of dark grey I think that's okay though And then this one. Right, so that's the animated one. Shall I bother recolouring that? Probably better. So I'm not too confused later. Uh, fine, let's run it. So we've got pink enemy in the tube, which is indestructible. Well, it's not yet. I've made the indestructible. Um, so a bit of code, 
Actually, I probably need a. We set it as a sprite value. Uh, Just gotta go and check how I handle the shooting. Some of them are shooting. Shoot ID equals eighty. Okay, so if I set a shoot ID it can shoot stuff. Um Yeah, I could just set a flag here, you see, which is like boom, it's solid. But then I always have to just check the, the base sprite, read its flag. I think that's okay. Yeah. So let's go back to the code and in the player bullets we want to find where we move the player bullets, bullets versus enemies. Here we go. Does it clash? Yes. Before deleting the enemy we want to check um, is the enemy invulnerable. I don't know if that's how you spell it. Right, um, if e dot, uh, there's something called s get or something, s get, is that right? Yes, e dot id, oh and then I have to specify zero for flag zero. equals zero or is it false equals false then do this blow it up everything up uh, actually we'll blow the enemy up but the bullet can be blown up anyway now what's that this explosion is for the enemy only. That just deletes the bullet. So we probably need a small bullet explosion if it's invulnerable and a different sound actually. Let's just test. Whoops, this didn't work. Syntax error line, Dale. End of file expected near end. Oh, right, yeah, okay. Yeah, it's invulnerable. Okay. Yeah, and the bullet disappears when it hits it. So, um,. Yeah, we want an else, so we're going to have else. We're always deleting the bullet. But we want to make an explosion, a different explosion. I'm going to look up bullet versus scenery, because that's got all the right stuff in it. Um, if it hit a solid wall, make explosion 2. Oh wait, there's some kind of offset stuff. That's okay, I'll just copy this for now. It's a bit naughty, but... I think that's got to say local. There's no offset Y's there. No. What's test X and Y? Oh. Hmm. oh yeah, they exist. I don't know if this will work. Let's have a look. Yeah, something's going on. Yeah, 
Yeah, I think that's working. Yeah, but we need a sound to indicate it's invulnerable. So, what have we got? We've got Let's try this one. Want a blink? Well, not quite like that. The speed is error. Yeah, I don't think this is quite the sort of sound we're looking for. Um, I need to clear this lot. Probably a square. Wow. Um, how do I clear it? I wish there was an easier way to clear this. Is it just delete or something? Shift delete? Nope. Yeah, I don't want all those. Is it down there? Yeah, okay, do that. Right, so let's just do a No. Oh, and a ting! That's a problem. God, I can't get the right sound. What about this one? That's harsh. Sawtooth. Where's the sine wave when you want it? Is that it? What's this one? Oh, that's weird. It's like a phased one. A bit shorter. Kind of the thing I want, but ching. I want more of a chink. That just sounds like a beep. <coughs> what the hell is it doing there? Oh, it's added some more in. I mean, I'll, tr I'll just plug it in for now and see what it sounds like, but that's not right. SFX5. Or well, something weird sounding about that now. It's not too bad. Yeah, what the hell's happened to that other sound? That's weird. There's something wrong with the firing sound now. How strange. <laughs> oh, they're invulnerable too. <laughs> that means the code isn't working, but I was going to test that in a minute. Hmm. Must be something wrong with sget. I'm going to look up the the parameters online. sget. Get the color. Shit. Pardon me. That's not what I want. I want the fget. 
f get value flag fine true or false okay f get what I'm actually going to do is just stuff another enemy in room one um, one of these not there actually so just so I can check yeah it still blows up yeah I mean the sounds back to normal but it's making this big beep at the beginning that I don't remember being there before see when I listen to it here Oh, that's the enemy shoot, isn't it? Right, where's the... Oh, that. Oh, damn, it looks like I've accidentally drawn over that, so... Must have been something like that originally. Damn! I think I might have to save and reload a backup I had and check. Uh, I'm going to take a screenshot of this. Just bear with me. I mean, it's close. Probably can see what it is earlier in this video if I pause it. So I've got a screenshot of this one. Let's just save it because, at least for now, it's close. Um, I'm going to just fiddle around with the files in the background, bear with me. Cyber down here, new, yep, P8. Okay, I'm going to load the old one now. Load Cyber Jam. Always keep backups, folks. Then, sound effects. That's what it looked like. Print screen. Paste it over the other one. Okay. Huh. It's sort of like completely different. This is weird. I reckon it was when I was using those, when I was pressing some delete and stuff earlier, something weird was happening. Wish I could copy this into the memory and paste it with the other one. Okay, let's get my old cyber jam back up. So, old, get the new one up, and then, wait, I'm suspicious, this is something very odd going on. Because now, oh yeah, I did fill that in. Fine. Yep. I'm going to try to set this to roughly the same values um, as before. Bit of a pain. I had three um, about here. If I take a screenshot, I can check if that's the correct. It's slightly too low. I'm comparing this with <laughs> Photoshop off camera at the moment. Okay, so the beginning's the same. Good. Then this one was up here. This was a bit lower. This one was about there. A bit lower. It's actually the same. Same, a bit higher, a bit lower. I'll just keep comparing off screen. Wow, what a bummer that I messed that up like that. Okay, very close now. Um.
Sorry, this must be a bit boring. I'll sort it. Imagine it's slow TV. One, two, up. Oh. Yeah. Down a bit more. I see. Trying to get this the same. It probably sound pretty similar if it wasn't exactly the same, but I really like the old sound a lot. I think it shifted across when I used those keys. Those two should be there. Keep comparing. We're getting closer. And then down one, two, three, got it. So this should be like oh yeah, two, two like that. Then like a half down, half down, half down. Then this to the same. Oh, I screwed it up. It should be like that. Then half, half, half. Nearly done. Oh, now I still messed it up. This is. Oh no, I haven't. That's good. One, two, three. That should have been up there. Two a bit lower. Oh, I've got the mouse over it on one of them. Wow, this is taking ages. Sorry, folks. Uh, down two. Okay. Nearly done. Two there. Three there. I think that's it. Then if I play it, ah, oh, restored. Right, save for God's sake. Sorry about that. Run the game. Okay. So that enemy can be destroyed. This one can't. All because I want to make a sound effect. It's almost. It's not too bad. I sort of wanted a. I'd love it if it was more complex and good. This sound. I want to sort of pew, you know. Maybe we can drop the pitch. That's not so good, is it? It sounds like shooting. If it goes up. Like it bounces off. Yeah, it's not bad. Let's run it. Boom, 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 boom,
Yeah, that'll have to do. Right, I'm going to adjust the hitbox zone then. But when you're in pipes, I think it's only fair to sort of trim a bit off the front and back. So, code, enemies. Uh, is it player versus enemies? There must be a thing called that. Player versus enemy. Okay. Oh, I'm using this sort of standard width. Okay, all enemies. Yeah, and player height. Same with enemy bullets. So I think I'm going to set up a couple more different variables make the player, there's the width and height and I want uh, hitbox width H HW HH maybe hitbox height only for enemies though. So what about the height? Let's just take shave a bit off the bottom and top and off of the width. That's just only one pixel, it might not be enough. We'll have a look. Whoops. Christ, I've got to get rid of that thing now. Now I know it works. Okay. No, that's not it's pretty tough. Wow, I wanted to see if I poke one pixel out. Oh, it didn't let me off. Oh, what a dumbass. I haven't altered the code. So, where are we down here? Player versus enemies. Come on. Okay. Hitbox width. Hitbox width. We might as well do it for enemy bullets as well. Player hitbox width. Box width. Where's the height? And then hitbox height. Bit confused. Well, I've used. Oh yeah, yeah. This is bad. Do not need that there. I want player dot hitbox width, player dot hitbox height. It's pretty hard to use this ID at certain times. Player dot hitbox width. Yeah. So the ham. I can't really get one pixel. <laughs> oh well. I mean, I've added, I could make it even smaller. Let's try and make it really small just to test, test it even works. So a silly amount like two and one. I mean, that's, would that be reasonable? I mean, if I was playing, I think that would be reasonable. But I think that wouldn't be. Maybe two pixels is reasonable. Dunno. I'll just poke my ass out here and see what happens. That's funny. Uh, it's not working on both sides. Of course. Only on the front and the underneath. Hmm. So that's because this code, where's it gone? Player versus enemies needs an adjustment. 
on test x and test y um, of an appropriate amount and the width needs to be reduced yeah so let's say I wanted to shave two off each side that leaves a four hitbox width of four I still don't have twos too many but I think we'd, no, we'd do one off each side six we we'll do my original plan here which is five so one off each side and then it's not too obvious to the player but it gives them just a little bit of leeway so this test coordinate player versus enemies is player x plus one plus one so uh, reduce hitbox by one on left and top on all sides yeah so well I'm just not going to be able to test this properly but basically you've got a small amount of leeway I mean okay it's going to, have to be a tough game yeah that's okay bit of leeway alright so we've got invulnerable enemies though I don't necessarily want them in the first room I want players to get used to the controls blow some shit up and then sort of not have to avoid stuff too early yeah well I can construct levels later that's okay they're, they're invulnerable now missiles I think I wanted to do that next um, so I've done invulnerable enemies in pipes done create more rooms well, I'll do missile enemies next uh, you are going to be able to shoot them I think can't remember if you could in the original or if you just had to let them fly past um, maybe we can decide that in a minute I'll create them first so well admittedly the colour is important then um, yeah I'll just have normal ones we only need one frame for these so let's get the rough shape planned out I mean it's got to look like a missile so sort of triangular don't know if it should be a single point but then so it's a bit awkward with single points and pixel art when you've got 8 by 8 yeah it's pointier though it's cooler mm. I think we will use this sort of thing I mean that's that's too too tapered sorry I'm flailing with the controls I mean this is the sort of bare minimum and I could add a sort of wing on the side like that and then color it differently um, I'm gonna go and check the original see how they did it bear with me just running watching a video cybernoid video um, oh, okay they're quite complicated they've got a tiny little point on them um, and they've got a spinning animation which is kind of really cool like the wings on the side spin around yeah okay so they're kind of cool so the originals are more like a point uh, 
middle bit, bottom bit. I don't think I'm going to be able to fit all of that into 8 pixels is the problem. Maybe. So something like this, a middle section, chop it off and then a sort of point like that. That might work. I mean they've got another point in there though. I could do make it more pointy yeah maybe and then wings so how are they doing it separate sort of wings okay it does look really cool the original one yeah then I've got, I haven't got room to fit them on this is the problem. 8 by 8. Not very big. Um, not sure how best how to do this. I think it might have to just be like this. Like a syringe almost. Yeah. I mean I can do that. Well, that's kind of cool. Maybe it needs like a, a thruster or something there. Um, right, I've also got to shade this, so we're going to go for darker on this side, lighter on the other side. Point, I'm not sure. It could have the whole point could be bright or just standard. Probably be right. Let's try it in game. Put one up there. Yeah, it looks alright. Like a missile. The little thruster at the top. It works. It blows you up. Basically, I've got to have these constantly detect when the player is directly under them and then fly down. So let's get some code in there. This is sprite number 73. It's going to need a, a movement pattern. It's different from the other ones. Um, or I, I always need it trigger because the pattern is once it starts going, I'll set the DX and DY and it can blow up when it hits hits the wall instead of turn around. Oh no, it's alright, I'll do um it's almost like it's an enemy bullet rather than an actual enemy. I'll just do it like this. Seventy three pattern equals two. Doesn't do any shooting. There's no animation at the moment. Range and stuff. Oh, all of this range stuff is obsolete. Oh no that one isn't okay. DX is going to be fast, like 2 or something. Yeah, 72, is that right? 73. Okay, and then we want some move enemy. If pattern is 2. to then do something else okay so we basically want to say if the player is underneath it oh we have to de determine which way it's facing because we might want them on the bottom of the screen we might want them on the sides for now we're going to assume it's on the top so um, if player dot x it's greater than or equal to s dot x and player dot y. 
No, it's less than eight. No, it's rubbish. Place is less than s dot x plus eight. Probably it should be a size. Then s dot dy equals two. I think I'll actually equal speed. S dot speed. Let's go back to where I defined it. Change that to speed. Okay. Yeah, it works. Great. Although it's not triggering when I'd expect it to. It's triggering when you've gone past. So let's check out the movement code. Something wrong there. Move enemies, where are we? Right, I think I need some blank lines here. If player x is greater than or equal to and it's less than I mean that seems right to me. Let's just kill out the second half. Now have a look. Yeah, that's weird. Oh, okay, right. Um, it's if the player's right edge, so player x plus player dot width is greater than the x, fine, and player dot x, the left side, is less than, yeah, I don't think these enemies have got sizes defined, so I, I'll leave that at 8 for now. That works, it's vicious actually. Whoa. Can you just fly under them? I mean, yes. Could make it faster or make sure they're always in tight corridors. S dot speed, let's find that. What if it's four? Oh. Yeah, I mean, that definitely gets you. You can't get past. But you can blow it up. Is that fair? You can probably also tempt it like that. Like that. Yeah, that's kind of cool. What about upward facing ones then? Um, I could just get rid of the ID check and no, so I need that right. ID, um, why have we got a range in there? 73 or ID equals 74. Let's flip it upside down. There might be keys to flip stuff, mirror stuff, but I honestly don't know um, in Pico 8. Probably some hotkey or rotation or something. Let me just check the docs. Editor. Rotate. R to rotate or V to flip vertically. Okay, so if I select and press V, nice. Okay, how do I deselect? I don't know. Okay. So that's a vertical one. Let's test it. OK, 
kill this off now. I don't know why it's put a dashed line everywhere. Oh, it is something strange there. That's okay. Right, if it's going up, do that, fine. Where's the movement code? Move enemies. Pattern equals two. So I need to check if. Right. If s dot id equals seventy three or s dot id equals seventy four, then check the x coordinate. And if and then, whoops. If s dot id equals seventy three, do that. Else. Oops, make it negative. And didn't like it. The equal signs. Bit of a classic. Oh, still doesn't like it. Another one. Wow, okay. Um then no. Oh, alright. Bam! That's vicious. Now the only thing is they fly through the wall at the moment. So I also have to check they haven't collided with the wall. Um, here we go. But that is... I feel like this reverse direction when hitting... Yeah, I'm going to have to use some of this. basically going to have to use copy and paste a whole big chunk of it it's getting a bit messy though because this is one enemy pattern I'm, I might want something later which triggers when it sees you but bounces off the wall and doesn't die or something but for now I'm going to use the same uh, it's going to have to be within this statement because this is only the vertical ones. Gosh, I could also add horizontal ones later. And something funny going on. Yeah, I put it in too much. Oops. So if the y, the speed y is that way, fine check the coordinates and this reverses it but I don't want to reverse it I want to destroy it so in fact let's just see what happens it'd be quite funny to see <laughs> okay all right that's not what we want to happen so let's go back to players and bullets we need some bit of code here put it versus and play versus enemies no bullet versus enemies make explosion delete the enemy blah 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 um, I think I need to put all of this into a single function So I call it enemy explode maybe E function enemy explode E and then I can use this code uh, in the movement routine. So instead of reversing, it will blow up. I'll pass S in this time, just to confuse matters. 
It's the same thing there. Oh crap. Yep, works. Let's test one the other direction. Just to make sure. I'm scared. Oh, it doesn't work at all. I've broken it. Worth testing. Uh, what? That's supposed to say 73. That's why. Oh, this is going to be hard to test, isn't it? Yeah, great. Missiles added. Good luck flying through there. Like it. Oh, blow them up. Yeah. Okay. Nice. So, I could add horizontal ones, but I can do that later. Let's kill these out. I might put them, um, like one of them here just to sort of show it off in a GIF. Yeah. There's a couple of them there. Can't remember how to take GIFs. So I'm going to shut this down now, make a GIF, and I'll come back and code some more another time. Thanks for watching. Bye.